Welcome to episode 57 of the Rapid Change Matters podcast, a conversation with hypnotist and owner of the Hypnosis Centre in Belgium, Rob de Groef. My name's Howard Cooper, and for over 14 years now, I've been fascinated with helping people to create personal change quickly. But I still come across many who believe that lasting personal change has to take a long time, consisting of reliving traumas or deep psychological analysis, or simply that flawed notion that understanding why you have a problem will somehow make it go away. I'm on a mission to get people who work therapeutically with others to shift their thinking and realize that these beliefs are not written in stone. Rapid change can happen. So, to help you open up to what's possible, I'm chatting with top therapists and agents of change who are out there getting real results with real people really quickly. Before we get to the interview, I've got big news. Rapid Change Works is now running live training events, and you can check out the latest events coming up by visiting rapidchange.works, where you can also download a free, quick-to-read PDF on five strategies to amplify your client's response, along with all the information about this episode and episodes still to come. Now, over to the interview. Today, I get to chat with one of Europe's leading hypnotists and the owner of the very successful hypnosis center in Belgium, where he works together with six hypnotherapists across three different cities. As someone who's trained hundreds of students in the art of direct hypnosis and someone passionate about keeping his mentor, Jeffrey Stevens, techniques and approach alive, he's someone who has witnessed on countless occasions this thing we refer to as rapid change. With a background in magic and mentalism, he's also keen to show hypnotherapists how they can use mentalist effects to help their clients improve their therapeutic goals, much of which is outlined in his latest book, Mentalism for Hypnotherapists. Welcome to the podcast, Rob de Groof. Hello. Well, Rob, it's an absolute pleasure to have you and looking forward to this conversation. I know we've spoken a couple of times, but yeah, definitely keen to get some of our interactions recorded. (laughs) <laughs> uh, for both uh, my enjoyment and the enjoyment of our listeners. Um, so look, why, why don't we just kick kick this off and, and start out by telling people a little bit about who you are, what you do, and, and really how you got started. What's your origin in all of this? Okay. So uh, my name is uh, Robert Grove. I'm uh, based in Belgium. Uh, I lived all my life in Belgium. I'm like 43 years old now. Um, I used to work as um, an artist, uh, an entertainer. Um, I had my own uh, clown uh, show. I, 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 most of the time I was working for children or uh, family events. Uh, I did stilt walking, juggling, fire spitting, uh, all those uh, types All the of, usual uh, things. Yeah, all the usual <laughs> things that you, you have to do to earn some money <laughs> when you're an artist. Uh, so, um, but uh, I, I, I got a little bit tired of performing for children. Um, I was a children entertainer, but I'm not so much. I don't have children my own, so I'm I'm not much a children guy. Uh, but uh, and I get tired of the balloon modeling and especially of the um, also of, of the attitude of the children and the parents uh, these days because it's not so funny anymore as like uh, 10, 15 years ago. The respect is a little bit gone for entertainers. They they see you as sometimes as. Um, just uh, yeah, the the, um, the nanny of the children. Uh, keep keep them busy. Whatever you do, just keep them busy. But that's that's not the goal of an entertainer, of course. Uh, you want to entertain them. Uh, so I, I wanted to do something else. I, I wanted to do more uh, entertaining uh, adults. So uh, and I had I had this experience uh, with hypnosis when I was like 16 years old. Um, I was in 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 an um, in a youth, uh, youth um, union for, for people who, who doesn't believe in, in God, uh, atheists. Uh, so we had uh, we have a lot of uh, Catholic um, uh, youth gatherings here in, in Belgium, but we also had something in our town for the non-believers. So um, and we, we invited a, um, uh, a speaker, uh, a hypnotist. Uh, it wasn't the things that I remember was that it was an, an quite old guy. I don't know his name, and it was like years ago. Um, and um, he did a talk about hypnosis. Uh, I remembered he did uh, some balloon and book tests and things like that. Um, and then um, 
he talked about uh, regression. And there was one girl, a friend of mine, she, she also played music uh, in, in a band that I was uh, playing in. Um, and she lost her mom when she was like seven years old. So she didn't have much uh, memories of, of the time that she had together with her mother. So she asked the hypnotist that he can bring her back to the time that her mother was still alive. So uh, the guy said, yeah, I can do it, but I don't think it's a good idea to do it here with all your friends. He said, yeah, no problem. Uh, I just want to go back and I, I, I want to have some memories, some vivid memories of my mother. So uh, he did the session with her. He regressed her to the time that her mother was still alive. And she started talking and she started uh, describing what she was she was um, going through uh, in the regression. But I was, I, I'm all, uh, at that time, uh, especially was really skeptic uh, about all those things. But her, her older niece was, was also there. She was like five or six years older. So she had more vivid memories of the time that the mother was still alive. And she started uh, affirming that, that the things that the girl was uh, describing in the hypnosis, that they really they really happened. So they, they, they were true. So, so at that time, there was a, a little seed planted in my mind Ah, hypnosis is something special. It's something you can um, do a lot of things with. So, but then, yeah, it, it stayed there, the, the little seed. But the moment I, I start looking for some ways of entertaining adults, um, I saw a hypnotist uh, at, a, at a fair for, for artists where I had my own boot uh, with, with all the children thing. Uh, and he was hypnotizing. And then I, I asked him if he can uh, give me a training, but he, he's a guy, he doesn't like uh, train other people, so he said, yeah, it's not possible. You, if you first have to read like a thousand books and then you can become a good a hypnotist. So, um, yeah, the, so the seed was growing a little bit in my mind. And then I, I got this invite from a, a magic uh, shop in the Netherlands. Uh, and they said, we have a lecture uh, in, in two weeks with a hypnotist. So mm -hmm. I, I signed up immediately and then I went to the lecture. It was a guy from Mexico who lived in the, the Netherlands and he did a lecture on hypnosis. And I had a chat with, with him afterwards. So and, and then all things started. So I, 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 he, he gave me a little uh, private training. Uh, I get in contact with other hypnotists on Facebook groups. Uh, so and then I start doing some hypnosis, entertainment hypnosis, because I, I I really was, didn't have any plans of becoming a therapist. So that was something that was not in my mind to say I wanted to learn hypnosis for entertainment, but not for therapy, because therapy is not my thing. So and then um, all of a sudden I got this phone call of uh, a colleague in uh, Belgium, uh, one of the guys I met uh, during a gathering of those Facebook groups. Uh, uh, and he, he told me and said, Rob, I bought some DVDs from uh, Jeffrey Stevens. You really have to watch those. I say, yeah, what is it? Street hypnosis, uh, stage hypnosis? No, no, it's therapy. I said, but I'm not interested in therapy. He said, yeah, but this is, is no nonsense hypnosis. It's, it's very short sessions, like 15-minute sessions, one session uh, most of the time for a problem. And, and really, no bullshit, just uh, no nonsense hypnosis. It, it, it told me it, it's, it's, it's created for you. When I, when I saw it, it's created for you. It's not my style, he told me, but it's created for you. So um, I, I, I started watching the DVDs, and after one hour, I was already sold. So I, I, uh, I went to my, my, my staff that was working at the time. We, we had an office at my home. So I said, OK, guys, you can't disturb me for the next hours, because I really want to watch the rest of the DVDs. Uh, so ask all your questions tonight when, when I'm finished. So I start watching them, and, and I, I, I immediately get a feeling that that type of doing change work it's it's it. Uh, Jeffrey Stevens is also referring to the fact that we're not doing therapy; we're doing change work because therapy and people have to come back and come back and, and a lot of time, months, years later. Mm -hmm. So we do change work. So I say, okay, when I can do it this way, I, I want to do it as well because one of the one of the things and there's an advice that I, I uh, will give to all my students is that you don't have to read thousand books to become a good hypnotist. You have to do it. You have to learn the techniques, and then you have to practice the techniques. You don't have to, to read and to, to watch thousands of, of DVDs. You have to do it. You have to see the people, and that, that's, that's really important. So 
um, as of the fact that in Belgium, uh, street hypnosis and all entertainment hypnosis is actually forbidden. Uh, and the market is not that big. We, we do it anyway, so it, it, it's a very old law. Nobody is acting on it, but um, we, are, we, we are still doing uh, entertainment. But it's not a big market, so I was really convinced that I, I couldn't uh, start as a hypnotist only doing my entertainment because I, I wouldn't have enough gigs and I wouldn't have enough time to, to do it, to, to be good, uh, to become good at it. Mm -hmm. So um, I decided to create a, a little website uh, and my plan was to have like two or three uh, hypnotherapy sessions a week just to, to keep in form and to, to, to hypnotize people and, and earning some money with it. So why not? Um, I started uh, and I started using the, the Jeffrey Stevens protocol immediately um, and like three months later, my schedule was already full. My, I, I remember a day that my, my secretary, she came to me and she says, uh, Rob, I have somebody on the phone here and she wants a session on Wednesday, the blah, blah, blah. And um, I say, yeah, book an appointment. She said, yeah, but you already have seven, uh, seven sessions that day. I said, huh? I have to do other work as well. So it, it boomed. Uh, one of the reasons was that I was the, the very first uh, hypnotherapist to start doing one session therapy with, with short sessions and not not mm -hmm. telling the people, yeah, stop smoking, you have to go make five appointments. So because people don't want to make five appointments, they want to get rid of the problem and they don't want to, to drive a lot and, and, and to make a lot of appointments. So that's, that, that was one of the reasons. Of course, the, the, the biggest reason were, were the results because I had a lot of referrals. So I had my, my Google uh, marketing and, and uh, and most of the, the appointments came from referrals. So um, it started booming like like uh, immediately. And nowadays, it, it's let, let's say it's like eight or nine years later. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I work with, with six therapists, as you, you mentioned in your introduction, uh, in three different cities. Um, so it's it's still booming. So it's great. Uh, also, of course, I have now a lot of st my students who are doing the same type of therapy uh, in Belgium. I'm not alone anymore. But in the beginning, people, they say, yeah, okay, you're, gonna, you're going to train your own competition. But of course, I'm training my own competition. Of course, there are more therapists they can go to. But because of there are more therapists working on the same way with great results, there are more people talking about hypnosis. There are more people considering change work or, or hypnotic change work. Yeah. And a solution for the problem. So my business is growing by by my students who also are having great results. I really like that, Rob, and I, I like the idea that you're not coming at this from kind of like a poverty consciousness. This idea of oh, there's not enough clients to go around, so I mustn't train other people in case they steal my. This is like yeah. ultimately, the more people that there are doing good work, the better will your benefit because it's raising yeah, of the course. profile of hypnosis yeah. and hypnotherapy yeah. and what it's capable of. And of course, uh, there are sometimes uh, students, they are not doing a good job and that's always, but they, they, they will get out of business because sometimes they, they you, you, when you do a training, you, you give them all the tools, but sometimes they're not using the tools on the right way. So, but they don't get results and, and people who don't get results, they go out of business mm. and all the, all the rest with the, with the, with the, good results with the big results with the great results and everybody is happy they start they start gathering other clients people are, are telling them to their, their friends relatives and so everybody is 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 growing because of the fact there are much more people working with the same system yeah no i i and i think that that that's so cool and and tell me because you i mentioned in the intro that you've written a book uh, yeah. And it's it's very recent. It's mentalism for hypnotherapists. Yeah. What 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 for you is the tie up between mentalism and and hypnotherapy? Why were you motivated to to write such a book? Uh, one of the reasons is that um, I did a lot of street hypnosis uh, and hypnosis on fairs and everything like that. I, I also have a training. It's called out of the blue hypnosis. Uh, I used to call it street hypnosis, but then a lot of the students, they, they thought that it was only a training when you really want to become a street hypnotist. Mm -hmm. For me, it's not. For me, it's, for me, it's really important that a hypnotist uh, and a hypnotherapist 
uh, also when they only have the goal to be a therapist, not not hypnotize outside of the therapy room. I think it's really important that they know how to to uh, do street hypnosis, how to do impromptu hypnosis, because that's that's the, the that's the place where you learn the most of it. You can you when you can hypnotize somebody in a in a nightclub where there is a lot of noise, or on the street where where there's a, a fancy fair going on, uh, you can hypnotize. For sure, in a therapy room, because in a therapy room it's a controlled environment. So uh, when you can do it out of the street at a party, wherever you can do it uh, anywhere. So Rob, I, Rob, I you're think... not suggesting, are you, that it's possible to hypnotize people without the whale music in the background? <laughs> I think it's possible. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah, you can use the whales, but no, no, no. I'm quite sure it's possible. <laughs> no, uh, no, for me, for me. Um, Every, every every circumstances should be good to hypnotize uh, somebody. I, I I remember I was in uh, in Scotland uh, a few years ago. Uh, I did a training with Bob, and we were out with a lot of hypnotherapists and hypnotists. And uh, there were some people uh, in, in a pub, and they come they came to us and they say, "Are ah, you a hypnotist? Yeah. Can you do some hypnosis?" And everybody was saying, "Yeah, it's too much noise here." I said, huh, "Too much noise? Why? Just hypnotize them." So and even later in the nightclub where, where the music was so loud, I start hypnotizing people. So and I think it's really important for also for therapists to know that. But one of the problems is when you go outside on the street and you, you or you, you go to a market and you want to promote your hypnotherapy business, especially in countries like Belgium, where, where people are really skeptical and, and not so open-minded for, for things like hypnosis. And you go um, towards somebody and said, "Okay, I'm a hypnotist. Can I hypnotize you?" They start running. They 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 have they have like the 100 meters in like 10 seconds. It's it's close to the world record <laughs> that they start running them. So um, I think it's better that you approach them with a with a more um, a slow approach and doing some some magic or some mentalism, um, mm-hmm. and not saying, "Okay, I'm gonna hypnotize you." They say, "Can I show you something?" And do some mentalism. Uh, and the reason I, I wrote this book is that I, uh, in the book, I, I teach uh, the hypnotherapist or uh, whoever wants to read the book. It's, it, it's called Mentalism for Hypnotherapists, but actually it's a basic training in mentalism. So I train them all the basic skills, uh, the, the easy to learn skills uh, where you don't have to go to the magic shop and buy a lot of props. Um, you can create most of them yourself or you don't need props. Um, so they learn basic mentalism skill and they can do something with a hypnotic twist because I I, uh, I described a lot of those uh, routines with a hypnotic twist. So let's say uh, you ask somebody to, to, to uh, do something to test this intuition and then before they start doing the test, you, you say, okay, close your eyes and ask your subconscious mind to... Uh, to, to uh, let your intuition work at 100%, that, 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 uh, the best that it ever worked, blah, blah, blah. And then open your eyes, okay, do the test. Of course, the test is, 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 a, is a trick. It's always working. But people, they are, they are at that time, they, 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 they see, okay, something, something happened. And then you use hypnosis. And then you can say, okay, you just uh, had this experience. Do you want to, to experience something else? And then you can do a swan or something. Yeah. Or you can do one of the, the, the magnetic fingers or all the other tests. So you can build it up to hypnosis. Because when you start, uh, uh, imagine you're at, you're at a party and somebody asks, uh, can you do something? Okay, uh, close your eyes, put on my hand, sleep, wine. And sometimes they, they are so overwhelmed that it's not going to work. But if you go to let them go to some, some hoops, if you uh, open the gateway to hypnosis using some mentalism, mm. uh, it's it's more it's more an, an easy approach, and and people are are more more into it, and you will have better results. And then I, in my out of the blue, I also teach them how they can uh, create some phenomena, uh, so they can show something. Because when you're a hypnotherapist and you're at a at a family party, and they ask this, most of those family parties, you you will meet family or friends that you didn't see for like five years. And they say, okay, what are you doing now? Uh, I'm a hypnotherapist. Oh, you do hypnosis. Tell me something about, okay. Um, yeah. Tell something. Can you, show, can you show something? Okay. But when you're only a therapist then you, you say, okay, uh, somebody wants to quit smoking. And this is the only thing that you can show. And nobody is interested in, in watching a therapy session. 
and, and don't think it's good that people are watching therapy sessions anyway. So, um, so you have to be able to show something because when I show something on a, on a party, I do some hypnosis, even it's only like five minutes. People start asking more questions and also about therapy and you're, you're always getting business uh, and then clients for your therapy business out out of doing a little demonstration. So that that's why I, I wrote the book. Yeah, and I, I think it's really good advice to, to to get out and actually start doing stuff. Mm. Um, I, I do, and I, I've been there. I've seen it. You know, loads of times where you know people will come up and hear that someone's a hypnotherapist, and they say, "Can you show me something?" And you watch them go into like their their, their color drains. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, don't ask me to do anything. <laughs> But I, I will, I'm very happy to talk to you intellectually about hypnosis, you know. And, you know, that, that doesn't tend to win clients, uh, mm. you know, if you show them something. Um, no, so, yeah, no, no. And, and I think I think mentalism, listen, as you know, Rob, I, I have a background as a magician, you know, years no. and years ago. Um, and one of the things that always fascinated me with, was the level of reaction or response that you would get as a magician. You show someone something that they can't explain. And, you know, you'd have people screaming and go, oh, it's just, you know. And, you know, years later, as I, as I moved into to the therapeutic intervention world, you know, so much, certainly of my therapeutic work seems to be revolved around helping people to evoke states, to elicit a strong state that you can utilize for some other therapeutic purpose. So I, I just think there's so much merit in you know, people, therapists, change workers, if, if that's what they do, in developing the skills, however they do it, of, of getting better at evoking states and becoming a collector of, of ways in which to do that. Uh, so I think it, it, it's genuinely a really good addition to, to any therapist's toolbox to, to move yeah. into and learn these skills. Yeah, of course. So what, what sort of stuff do you work with? Are you, as a, as a change worker now, um, are there particular areas that you specialize in or you do a little bit of everything? Well, actually, I did everything. Um, in, in, our, in our hypnosis center, people can, can come for every, every problem. We, ha we, we have some programs. Uh, we, we also have the virtual gastric band uh, designed by, uh, by Sheila Granger uh, we're using. I'm also a trainer for uh, Belgium and the Netherlands. Uh, most of the time, we use the swan as an introduction to the to a session. So, so actually, people can come for for all kinds of uh, mm -hmm. issue. Um, we have some some therapists uh, who are specialized in in some of the the issues. I have one. Uh, uh, she's brand new now. Uh, therapist. She's also she's uh, she works in a, a local hospital here as a anesthetist, uh, and she's she's doing. Uh, only the pain related uh, sessions here now so, mm. so really focused on that um, we have uh, two therapists they are also doing the in a Simpson protocol uh, here so we have all those different uh, things in our toolbox because I, I, I think it's really interesting for um, uh, I think you you have to build your business on one approach on one protocol and then you have to see that you have many other stuff in your toolbox, of course, because sometimes that one approach is not good for that type of client or it, it's not getting the results that you want. So you have to do something else. You have to go in your toolbox and, and find another tool. But I think it's really important that, that you build your business on one protocol and then expand it to more uh, things. Because now for every session, whether it's stop smoking, weight loss, or an anxiety or an erection problem, we we immediately know we have the basic, we have the fundamentals we can start with. So mm. the Stevens protocol is the, the base. And sometimes uh, as the, when, when the change worker has a feeling, oh, no, I, I need something else, he can use something else. But we also we, we always have the fundamental, we always have the basic. So I never have to think when, when what the problem is. I, I, I did sessions with people uh, they had issues i never heard before but i i never know up front what they are coming for so i never i never use scripts mm. so i don't need them uh, because i have the base of the the jeffrey stevens protocol so i i, I sometimes have uh, had people uh, sitting in my therapy room and they were talking about a problem with a very scientific name and i say yeah 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 of course yeah. 
And then, uh, yeah, they were sitting and then they had to go, oh, I said I had to go to the toilet or they had to go to the toilet. I went to my office, Wikipedia, and I typed in the very scientific name and said, oh, that's the problem. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, so they yeah. described it. I had an idea of it, but, but I never heard a word. But it, I don't need it because the only thing I need is uh, what's your problem? What do you want instead? So that, that's what we are doing. We don't, we don't, I don't, I never do regression. I don't go to the, to the background of the problem. The only thing I, I actually do is, is asking the subconscious mind to stop doing this and doing something else instead. And, and that's what direct hypnosis, especially the Jeffrey Stevens protocol is about. So, and in most of the time we have, we have result in one session. Um, mm -hmm. so that, that's, that's great. And going back to something that you said during the rapid fire round, and, and by the way, for those of you who are listening, going rapid fire round, rapid fire round, where's that? What's that? Scroll down, scroll down underneath this episode on the page. You'll see the rapid fire round. And it's eight questions in two minutes. And one of the questions that I asked you, Rob, was what's the worst advice currently being given out within the world of change work? And uh, can you remind us of your answer? Well, I said um, that you have to believe in hypnosis. Uh, you don't have to believe in hypnosis. Uh, I tend to find that people uh, who doesn't believe in hypnosis are most of the time they are easier to hypnotize and they have better results sometimes. It, it's, it's, it's sometimes crazy. But the only thing that you need to be, you have to be open to hypnosis as uh, a way to solve your issue when when you're already up front saying um i don't want to be hypnotized and that's not gonna work and blah 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 then then it's not gonna work but i had i hypnotize a lot of people they said i'm open to it I, I want to give it a chance but actually i don't believe in it but that's okay as, yeah. as long as they follow my instructions as long as they don't block whatever i try to do um then then there's no problem as long as they want to give it a chance then it's okay uh and i don't i don't think um that um you have to believe in hypnosis to have great results and another thing i always um it's not an advice but it's, it's a description i i yeah i had uh, saw it uh, a few days ago somebody was, was starting a new training and they start what and about hypnosis and i say it's hypnosis is uh, getting somebody uh, deeply relaxed. I, uh, it, it's, it's also my training with Jeffrey Stevens. There's relaxation is okay. You can you uh, for me relaxation is is a result of hypnosis. I I don't need people to be relaxed to hypnotize them. So I don't see why 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 there are still a lot of people are, are still saying hypnosis is deep relaxation. No, it's not. Mm. There, there. I had a lot of clients who are not able to relax, but they went very deep into hypnosis. But they don't need to be relaxed. So uh, I remember Jeffrey had this line in his training. He says, uh, "I never use the word relaxation uh, in my uh, session because I don't want them to be, to be relaxed. Because in 20 minutes I will kick them out of my office, and when they are too relaxed, they don't want to go." So uh, yeah, <laughs> so that's uh, yeah. So I. I I also never use the word relaxation uh, because it's not relaxation. It's hypnosis. It's something else. So what do you, what do you tell people hypnosis is, or, or do you even get into that conversation? Uh, I don't do a pre-talk uh, in the therapy room anymore because uh, I, I sent them a video with, uh, with a pre-talk. Uh, I think it's way better uh, because um, when you do a pre-talk in the therapy room, most of the people are nervous. So it's getting one ear in, one ear out, and they and after the session they say, "Oh, yeah, I was not sleeping. I could hear everything." So if you give them if you give them a pre-talk up front, they have more time to 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 get the feeling. Uh, the only thing I say is that that um, uh, the, the moment they get hypnotized, they don't have to search for uh, a specific feeling. Uh, I can't describe them how they're gonna feel because I used I used to tell them when you. Uh, when you in, uh, interview 100 people after a session, you get 100 different stories because hypnosis is for everybody different. Uh, the mm -hmm. experience, the, the, the way that you feel uh, or not feel when you're hypnotized is for everybody different. Um, I, I, I remember my, my expectations from hypnosis was that 
uh, somebody is going to hypnotize me, the lights just go out and I go blank, and everything is going blank. But it's not, of course. So I had a misconception about it. Um, so I, I really want to inform people that they don't go to sleep, of course. Uh, the, the first thing that they, they, I, I'm not going to um, control them and they're not going to do it. On stage, of course, I, do, I, do, I don't give that guarantee. <laughs> but uh, uh, in the therapy room, I'm not going to let them do things they don't want to do. Um, no, uh, but but um, they still have the control. They they are there. They can hear everything. They can think. They even can think. And that's something uh, I think it's really important to, to uh, tell people that they still can think. And I, I give them an, an example because it's a real life example. I was doing. Um, the, an introduction talk before the session with uh, with this girl uh, about uh, stop smoking, and I, I was there was a time that I was still doing the pre talk in the therapy room. I didn't have the video uh, at that time, so uh, I, I told her, um, "You're gonna hear everything. You can think." And she says, "Yeah, I know because my brother was here uh, one week ago, and during the session he was thinking, what a lot of bullshit is this?" and do I really have to pay 150 euros, euros for this? And I'm, am I going to be a non-smoker with this nonsense? And I was looking at her and I said, and? Yeah, he's a non-smoker now. So he during the session, during my change work, he was thinking, this is bullshit. He was thinking, I'm paying a lot of money for this and it's not going to work. And it still works. Because and, that, and and I give this example a lot of time to students, but also to clients, so they know they can start thinking. And when when people are hypnotizing me, I'm thinking all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I I had it when I when I did entertainment. I was on stage. I was doing my show, and 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 at that time I was thinking of other things of, of invoices I had to make, uh, emails I had to do, or phone calls I had to, to make. So. I tell people, don't bother if you start thinking about that you have to go to the shop later after the session and you don't have to forget to buy some butter. So don't matter. I'm talking to your subconscious mind. I'm not talking to your conscious mind. Let, let your conscious mind think of, of all the, the stuff that you still have to do, but I'm talking with, to your subconscious mind. So And, and when you inform people uh, that they still can think, that they still can hear everything, then, then for me... I know a lot of uh, a lot of hypnotists and, and hypnotherapists. They want to do uh, something as a convincer uh, in in a session. I don't do it anymore, um, and there's a there's a good reason for it because the guy the guy uh, was thinking this is a lot of bullshit. He did the, he did a seven day training with us. He, he has his own in, in uh, insurance company. He, he's, he never used it, but he was interested in mm. this thing that made him. Uh, <laughs> Although he did, he, he thought it was bullshit. So he did a seven-day training, and he's he's actually a guy that doesn't go really deep into hypnosis. Um, and he's a guy that you probably a hand stick is probably too much to ask because he can't imagine it. It's, it's not going to work. So if you if I did a convincer with that guy, it is it, it probably going to fail. Mm -hmm. And then I'm quite sure the session would because. Then he was convinced that oh this is not working, and now he was still he was only thinking it, it's not working, and it still works. So I think when you do a good session, I do I always do a swan, so they, they have a kind of convincer already. Uh, I do a good session with good deepeners, and I do I do a vivid session. They they, they feel something. I do the, the passing through the zero deepener where, where they really feel something. And I, when you give them an experience, you don't need a convincer anymore. Uh, and and I, I think it's it's always a risk to do the convincers. Uh, I, I love them when I do I, I do them all the time when I do entertainment, of course. Uh, and I, I and I go all the way. I, I don't I don't. Uh, for me, it's not a problem to fail when 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 I do a hand stick and and the hand is not stuck. It's no problem. I I, I go for me. It's okay. I, I I really love the way Justin Trans is thinking about it. Dare to fail. You you have to do it. You have mm -hmm. to fail. But I don't want to. I don't want to fail in the therapy room. That, that's not interesting because people start start doubting too much. They, they, they start making meaning, don't they? That they start going well, you yeah. know. And I, you know, I, I think there is a whole conversation to be had around how how to use convincers in a session. Yeah. Um, because I have seen people do some really great therapeutic work 
get them close to this change and then they kind of go off and do this and now to prove how good this is uh, and what happens is they stack the entire therapeutic results on the outcome that they can't guarantee of this other thing and the truth is they're not linked um it's just that they've set it up that way um yeah. Yeah, when you set it up that way it's, it's it's really dangerous it can ruin your entire session and it's not because of somebody is is somebody can has can have very good results in therapy but it's not a good subject for for all those phenomena and that's I, i'm not a good subject for all mm-hmm. those phenomena but i have good results in therapy yeah. when when they hypnotize me most of the time my my, my issue is gone in one session very mm-hmm. short session but don't ask my subconscious mind to, to get stuck on the floor or to forgot my name because it's terrible yeah so listen i I remember one of the very first sessions i ever did and i don't i'm not sure whether i even dare uh publicly uh, publicly let people know about this terribly embarrassing story (laughs) but there you go one of the very first sessions i ever did for fear of flying and i'm talking you know 15 16 years ago fresh out of training uh and we did some really good work and i said to him you know you know when you think about flying now how how is it oh yeah it seems all right i said well let's 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 go and do some hypnosis to make it stick, you know, really. So now I've done this great session, and now we're doing this uh, stuff, and it was just really simple arm catalepsy. I suggested that his arm would would float up towards his face, only as fast as he could integrate all of these changes and make it permanent and so on. And this guy just was not responding, and, like, maybe it, like, like a tiny little bit of movement. And I was like, that's right, that's right. And I'm, you know... I'm looking at my watch. 20 minutes later, he's still like it's barely going up. 20 minutes later, and I'm going, that's a come on, come on, you could um after about half an hour, 40 minutes, I realized like time's up. I've got someone else coming. Uh, and like, and now I'm caught in this, like, well, do I wake him up? Do I say, open your eyes? Sorry, you didn't quite get there. Like, how'd you get out of this? And yeah. I didn't need to worry about this, how to get out of it, because he suddenly opened his eyes and went. Didn't work, did it? He sat for 40 minutes uh, and suddenly uh, Young Zell goes, didn't work, which is a shame because he had done some really good work. And why, uh, you know, and that was the moment when I thought, I don't, why, am I, why am I tying these two things together? They're, no, they're, they're no, two separate no, things. No. I, I, I do this, I do actually something similar, but uh, when I do the swarm, I do the swarm up front before mm-hmm. the session. You know? And then I do my, my, my session. And then I ask, because I'm, I already know that they have a good swan, it's already installed. And then I ask uh, the, the swan, uh, okay, subconscious mind, if you're uh, ready to make these changes, if you're really uh, accepting this job that you're going to make the changes, just turn the, uh, the hand uh, back to, the, to their body and then give them a feeling that you're on the job. And, but then I already know that, 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 that the swan is working. So, so then you can do it, of course. But uh, yeah. It, the, the combination is sometimes uh, the problem. Yeah. So, so Rob, given that this is the Rapid Change Matters podcast, and a lot of my uh, themes and passion is about showing people that rapid change can happen, we've already talked a little bit about the fact that you are known for having you know kind of a one session approach mm-hmm. uh, and getting some phenomenal changes. Could you give us some real examples of a couple of cases, people that come in, seen you, it's been transformed. Oh. I have a lot, um, but one, uh, a few that, that are really in my mind are, I had this uh, lady, um, she came in for a stop smoking session. Uh, I, I did a stop smoking session with her sister a few weeks before, and she made an appointment for a stop smoking session. She came in and she started talking and she said, yeah, can I ask you something? I have this this thick, thick nerve, I don't know, it's, it's the same in English, thick nerve, mm-hmm. uh, thick, yeah. So um, they, she was always moving her tongue and, and, and playing with her teeth, with her tongue. So her, her mouth was never still. So um, she said, yeah, can we work on this? I said, yeah, of course, why not? Uh, we will leave the smoking for later. We, yeah, let's do this. So again, at that time, I was really happy that I have a protocol to work with and I don't need a script because mm-hmm. my, I... I, I didn't have a script ready for it's a stop smoking session so i wouldn't have had a script for a tick if i was a, a script notice so um i just did the session and and the only thing i actually did is i don't know if you know the this little uh funny movie is called stop it 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So actually, the only thing I did was telling the subconscious mind to stop it. The only the only difference in in the movie it, the guy said is to the to the conscious mind, of course, and I I said it to the subconscious mind, and the, I, I said subconscious mind don't do this anymore because there's no need for. Uh, she's embarrassed about it. Don't do it anymore. So it was a very short and effective session. Yeah. Uh, after two weeks, she um, she sent me a uh, text message. She said, "Rob, can I make an appointment for the stop smoking now? Because uh, I'm really happy. My my mouth uh, is, is still now. Uh, it's it's not moving anymore. So and she came in, and the first thing that she did was she she came in and she she had this big smile and she pointed at her mouth. See." It's still <laughs> so. So it, it it was great. So that that's one of the things. That it, it's a few years ago. That one of the things that uh, that pop up in my mind immediately. Uh, one other thing. Uh, it's only like uh, a few months ago. I I, uh, I came back from a holiday and I uh, saw in my to do list that there was an an, uh, an an email from. We have a company who. Uh, is answering our phone calls and they send us mails to say you, know, you have to call back to this guy and uh, it was a guy i did two sessions with him uh and he he wanted me on the phone to thank me personally so the the first session i did with him was about alcohol he had uh, he was not an alcoholic but he had he, he drank a little bit too much so i did that for him and then he came back and he said yeah i have this this uh sexual problem uh he said uh, he was coming too soon. It was not really, um, really immediately, but but too soon. He said it's not good for my my, my sex life, and my wife is not happy. And uh, so I did a session with him, and 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 also that session was was only one session. Uh, uh, he's he's a great responder, uh, so I already knew from from the, the session for the alcohol, and. He, he really wanted to speak uh, me personally to thank me that because there were two aspects in his life that, that were a problem. It was the alcohol and, and the, 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 the sexual thing that he was, uh, yeah, was, he was worried about. Uh, so those things were gone. And the good thing is his father is also kind with me. I had his daughter. And so the entire family is changed. Every, everybody is, I don't say they don't have any problems anymore, but um, the, the, the biggest issues they, they were um, getting in their, in their life, they are gone. So the entire family is, 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 is happy about the change work. So that, that's great. So that, those are some stories that, that uh, really give meaning to, to the things that you're doing. I love uh, it. Yeah, I love it. I, I, and tell me, if people are listening and they want to do more of this kind of direct hypnosis, are there any books or uh, things that you would recommend, resources that you would recommend they yeah. look at, explore? Uh, the best way is to get a, a live training with me, of course. That's, uh, that's the of best course. way. <laughs> no. Of course, it goes without uh, saying, course. Rob, of course. Yeah, of course. No, uh, I'm, I'm traveling the world now to do the to introduce people to the Jeffrey Stevens Protocol. It's a, it's a two-day training. Um, I did one uh, in Hull uh, a few months ago, uh, and uh, I'm... I'm, I'm Planning to uh, return to the UK anyway to do some uh, some trainings over there. Uh, I will do one in New York in uh, May uh, at the Hypnobis Convention, a pre uh, conference uh, workshop. I will do one uh, also in May, one week later at Shawn Michael Andrews place uh, mm-hmm. in uh, Augusta, Georgia. Uh, but uh, there are, there are also uh, I have some online training uh, with Jeffrey Stevens. Uh, I'm, as we speak, I'm editing uh, some new materials because there is the, the weekend workshop with Jeffrey Stevens, but it's, it's, it's quite old material. Um, uh, I have new material from the last time Jeffrey was here in, in Belgium to do his training. It's all videotaped. There are some minor issues with, with uh, the sound. Uh, sometimes the battery from, from the mic was flat, so, but it's only minor issues. So it's it's the entire training uh, videotape with the latest uh, the latest things that Jeffrey developed for for his protocol. So um, I, I think it's actually the, the very last training was ever video uh, videotaped that he did uh, because a few months later he was he was getting sick and he, he died uh, two weeks after getting sick. So mm. um, so but um, yeah. The, those those are uh, possibilities to learn the, the Jeffrey Stevens protocol. Um, 
So on my website, there is uh, a, a possibility to, to buy them. There is also, uh, but whenever there's somebody out there in the world who, wa who wants to host me to do a training in direct hypnosis or my out of the blue hypnosis training or mentalism for hypnotherapist training, uh, I'm, 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 that's the reason why I'm working with six therapists. Uh, I'm, I'm remodeling my business so I can travel and, and teach the, especially the Jeffrey Stevens protocol because it's, it's, a, it's a very good protocol. I, I also, Jeffrey did it. He trained a lot of people who were seasoned hypnotherapists who were working for years and years and years. And after the training, they changed their approach. They, they, they said, okay, this is something, it's, it's time-saving, it's effort-saving, it has good results, people are happy uh, um, most of the time, one session. And, and the, the, only, the only thing that they sometimes have to, uh, sometimes have to think about is uh, they start wondering, okay, but... Now I see a client five times and he pays this and then he come only one time and okay, mm. I have to raise my, well, you have to raise your price, of course. But, but that's no problem because when, when, you, when you can fix a client in one session or, or, or let's say two, if you, uh, because sometimes it, it, we, we are making a little change here now, uh, to be honest, because sometimes people don't believe that they have a problem like 15 years and you can change them in one session. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when we you, you can feel it, so all my therapists are informed now. So when the moment you feel that the, that the, the client has the a little doubt and he needs he needs this reassurement in a, in a second session, give him a second session. And the the way that we approach it now is we say, okay, let's book a second session. And when you have the feeling that you don't need it, you can cancel it for free. So. Sometimes two days before the session, they, 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 they send an email. Hey, hello. Uh, remember, I came for this problem. Problem is gone. I don't need the second session. Okay. So their mind is already fixed. They are set. They are, they are reassured. They don't need the reassurement anymore. Mm -hmm. so, so it's great. But sometimes the people need it because they, they don't believe that. They, because of the fact that most of the people who are seeing a hypnotherapist, they did so many other things without result. They, most of the time, hypnosis is not the first choice. So they did a lot of stuff without results. And now you're saying, uh, okay, I'm going to fix you in 15 minutes uh, and you only have to come once. So sometimes it, it's, it's beyond their, their way of uh, accepting. So they, they can't accept it. So sometimes it, it's good to just do a follow-up session just to reassure them. Actually, you don't need it, but just to reassure them. So, uh, yeah. Rob, tell me, if people want to check you out, where can they go? How can they get in touch? Uh, my website, uh, it's uh, just my name.com, robdegrove.com. Uh, uh, I think you will post a link. It, it's, it's easier because my name is, yeah, it's a Dutch name. And most of the time they uh, pronounce it like Rob de Groove, something like this. I've got no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. <laughs> no idea what you're talking no, about. And uh, I also... Uh, the... Don't go back and listen to my intro, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, and um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, robbygrove dot com or uh, mentalism uh, for hypnotherapists dot com. Mm -hmm. uh, you can write four in a number or four uh, in letters. It's it's all the same. Uh, I also have the spiral magic dot com, and that's where you can uh, see all the magic stuff or mentalism stuff that I created, especially for hypnotherapists. So uh, all the stuff about trainings and everything is on my main website, and then I have all these other uh, for one for the book and one for the magic tricks. Fantastic. So, yeah. And Fantastic. for people who want to get informed about how we run the hypnosis center here, this, the website is, is not yet in English, but we have hypnosis center, uh, dot com. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I have, no, dot be. I have to be correct. It's hypnosis center dot be. But, and we're going to create an English uh, website as well. So, because I, I get a lot of uh, questions when I, when I teach abroad, people, uh, how do you run your business? Say, okay, I have this and this website, but they can't understand it because I'm in Dutch, of course. So, I'm, uh, and as, as we have also, because we have the European Union here, uh, we, we have potential English speaking clients as well. So, we're going to create the entire website in English as well. Fantastic. Well, as, as mentioned, we will put all of the links uh, underneath the episodes. It's nice and easy for people to find. Um, final question, Rob, is when we discussed you coming on the Rapid Change Matters podcast, is there anything that you 
uh, would like to mention, would like to share, but that I just haven't asked directly? Well, um, mm -hmm. one, of, one of the, I, I already mentioned that um, one of the things that I really um, want to give as an advice to people is um, you can do a lot of trainings, you can read a lot of books, but you have to hypnotize. See, see people, hypnotize people. Even when you're when you're a fresh starter and you don't have clients, uh, start hypnotizing your friends, your, your relatives, um, or when you don't have the opportunity to, to hypnotize somebody, just take a chair, put your your teddy bear on it, and hypnotize your teddy bear so that you get used of using the language, that you get used of doing it, because it's it's really terrible. When you have your first client and you have to start thinking about what you're going you're going to do, because then at that time you you're not concentrated on your client. The moment yeah. you start hypnotizing somebody, you you don't have to start thinking about what you're going to do. It has to be second nature, and all the focus has to be on the client. And I know in the beginning it, it it's really difficult. Um, one of one of the questions uh, I, I got every uh, training I do is. How do you see somebody is hypnotized? I say, I can give you some clues, but it's always different. The, the only thing you can learn how to see that somebody is in, in the, the right state to do some change work is to is experience. This is watching your client when you're hip, uh, hypnotizing. When you're hypnotizing and you have to look at your script or, or, or whatever that you have there, uh, or your iPad where, where, where your script is on, then you're not hypnotizing your client you're not looking at your client all your mm -hmm. focus has to be on the client and that's something something i think it's 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 very very important i i, I even techniques techniques are okay and, and 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 people ask which is the best induction there is no best induction the best induction is the one that that you like and that's suitable for your client so Bringing people into hypnosis is not that difficult. The, the, the only the, the goal is to, to be focused on your client, to have the right mindset, and that's really important, uh, especially when, with, with everything that you do with hypnosis. I, I did the, the SWAN training yesterday here in, in Belgium, and one of the things I said to my, my students is, the moment you start talking to the subconscious mind and you want the, the subconscious mind to take over the hand and do the movements, imagine the movements believe that the movements are going to come and then they will come but when you're thinking in your mind oh, oh, this is a hard one it's not going to work it's not going to work and it's not going to work so yeah. just just imagine that it's working and and then it's going to work so that mindset is everything and and, and focus on your client when you do uh, change work this is one of the most important things and belief in what you're doing absolutely fantastic and sentiments i quite 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 share so thank you thank you rob for spending some time with us today on the rapid change matters podcast really appreciate your time and hope the listeners have found it as enjoyable as i have and if there's uh certainly uh you know some advice to follow which is just getting out there doing it and developing refining your skill from actually going for it i think it's a, a very good thing to do thank you very much i hope you enjoyed this episode and if you did why not share it with anyone you think might be interested and even head over to iTunes to give us a glowing review. You'll find more about what's coming up on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash rapid change matters hyphen podcast. And of course, you'll find all the links related to this episode, plus those upcoming live events that will help you hone those change work skills.